Ian was quite an uncategorizable figure in the art scene of London in the early 2000s and then later in Berlin. And he was a performer, primarily as an artist and a writer, but he also was very well known as a curator, particularly and primarily of the moving image. So he worked as the adjunct film curator for about a decade at um, the Whitechapel, and he also worked with places like Lux and the Oberhausen Film Festival. So he, was, um, he had this kind of very interesting hybrid practice. I think the other thing about Ian's work as an artist particularly is that he came into it through, through these other kinds of work, through being a, a curator of moving image and also through close friendships that he built up with artists, you know, and I think it's more usual to see an artist decide to take on the role of a curator, but to see a curator, or not just a curator, also a writer and a teacher, for them to kind of move more clearly into the spotlight and develop their experiences into, into actually a performative practice is unconventional and brave and there was a lot of, at the time, people who perhaps weren't ready to accept that that was uh, possible. In a way, I think Ian was making work with this idea that every presentation of an artwork, however static seeming, is kind of live, present, urgent, contemporary for the audience that's experiencing it. And so I guess that's maybe a principle we've been trying to think about, is not trying to kind of point to a past kind of you know, trying to document these, these historical events, but to actually think about what the life of these works is in the present for the audience that's going to come to Camden. The whole experience has, has been a challenge because primarily how can you transfer a performative practice into an exhibition context? One of the things we kind of discovered after he died was that he was quite a meticulous archivist of his own work. We had to do some tracking down of documentation of the performances, but actually he'd kept a lot of the kind of working materials and, for example, technical scripts. The starting point was to see physically what, there, what actually exists. And there's a, a very few uh, kind of objects that are actually there, some of which are being displayed here. And then there were these documentation and there was also kind of various kinds of ephemera. And then thinking about how to approach each piece, because each has its own kind of internal logic. You know, it's been important to us that there's, that there's an integrity to those decisions that's kind of guided by the work itself. My name is Jimmy Robert, i French artist here to look into the part of the collaborative works that I've done with Ian over a few years. Very early on we decided to collaborate and not only have this relation like you know, artist to curator but also artist to artist. So we decided to make a performance together and the first performance we did was um, six things we couldn't do but could do now. We were mostly interested in dancing and movement at this point and Ian had organized a screening of uh, even Rainer's films and met her and knew of Trio A, which was already an interesting relation in terms of, you know, film, dance, this kind of correlation. So we spent a lot of time while learning Trio A also kind of looking at live drawing and so some of the drawings in the exhibition are coming from us doing like one-to-one -one drawings of each other's legs. Each time documenting the process, you know, it was like, okay, what are we spending this time doing? How are we occupying space with our bodies? And I was also documenting some of these moments with a very small uh, Polaroid camera, not necessarily knowing what I would do out of the works, but since we knew we had this installation, I knew I would produce some photographic work. In the performance, we performed 308 three times from three different positions, and each time we had the monitor with Yvonne Rayner herself like performing it, so that's why it's reappearing now in the show. Then there was a series of um, movement-based sequences that were non-narrative, like the piece was mostly silent, but Ian was playing the piano, and there was also a piece from John Cage that came out of the stage of drawing exhibition. So there were many things that were throwing questions and desires that we've had in relation to performing. And then some time went by after this and we knew we wanted to do something else again, something that would reflect on theatre. And so came Mariage à la mode, uh, uh, Écor Anglais, 
and which was a piece that was made for the theatre, which was thinking a lot about um, photography, posing, mortality, and uh, so now we have this big red curtain, which was not used as a curtain ever during the piece, but folded and moulded in different shapes. And so now it's interesting to have it here as a bit of a kind of uh, index or gesture towards this performance, but not, you know, entirely representing it. it. For me, it's an ongoing process also in terms of um, what we shared and the discussions that we've had are still ongoing in terms of, you know, performance practice and what it means to use one's body in relation to other objects or whether it's film or photography or drawing, etc. So uh, I hope like while people are looking at the show, they will be kind of reflecting on these questions and that, you know, we kind of adapt to this debate and which I think is ongoing, the performance, there's still a lot of things that need to be addressed and need to be conceptualized and understood. So I think that would, we're arriving at a good moment.